Yesterday was Ash Wednesday and we remember that Jesus is now walking toward Jerusalem and over these next coming few weeks in Lent we will journey with Jesus as he journeys towards Good Friday and the cross and of course Easter Sunday with his resurrection. Perhaps you weren't able to join a local congregation for an Ash Wednesday service and so I invite you to enter into a time of meditation now. We use Luke chapter 22 verses 1 to 6 as the basis of our meditation. Now the festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. Going to reflect on each one of these verses in turn and I invite you just to relax your body. You might even like to place your hands on your knees. You may even wish to close your eyes at times. Now the festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching. Imagine yourself as a pilgrim walking to Jerusalem in Jesus' time. Your family has made the pilgrimage to celebrate the Passover meal, followed by the week-long festival of unleavened bread to commemorate the barley harvest. Jerusalem is busy and bustling with all sorts of pilgrims, thousands of others making preparations for the approaching feast. You search out an unblemished lamb, the correct size for your family, to remember the time when God rescued your ancestors from slavery in Egypt. You stop at one of the many carts lining the street and you purchase some flour to make unleavened bread to remember how your ancestors crossed the desert. How else will you prepare for the upcoming feast? The chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus for they were afraid of the people. Jesus has been teaching in the temple, speaking against the chief priests and the teachers of the law. There's no longer any question in their mind of whether Jesus should be killed. The matter at hand is the way to get it done. The how of destroying Jesus. Yet the chief priests must tread cautiously, for many people are still hanging on Jesus' every word. Imagine that you are sitting at Jesus' feet in the temple, listening to him teach. What is he saying to you? Then Satan entered Judas, 
called Iscariot, one of the twelve. Jesus has resisted Satan's temptations earlier in his ministry. And as it is written, after the devil had finished all his tempting, he left Jesus until an opportune time. Well, the opportune time has arrived and Satan is ready. He enters Judas, possessing his body. There is a war between cosmic forces, between God and evil, and this transcends mere human interests. In this war, Satan enlists Judas, one of the twelve, one of Jesus' closest friends. Judas is someone Jesus trusts. So close they even share bread together. But now he has turned away. Jesus has been rejected by his hometown, been rejected by his own people, and now one whom he's closest with, one whom he shares bread, has rejected him and betrayed him also. Have you ever been betrayed or rejected? Do you feel alone? Jesus has walked this lonely path and he promises to be with you in word and spirit. Imagine his presence with you right now. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. Judas turns away. He withdraws from Jesus' company to the chief priests and the temple guard. Imagine walking slowly away from a candle into the darkness. In the darkness, Judas discusses with them the how. How he might betray Jesus, how he will hand over Jesus to them, into their hands. And in the dark, the enemies whisper. As the psalmist writes, all my enemies whisper against me. They imagine the worst for me. Even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who I share bread with, has turned against me. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. There is a joyful anticipation in the air for these enemies. They come to an agreement, and an agreement is just two things which are placed side by side. Judas will give them one thing, and they will give him another. Judas will deliver Jesus into their hands, and they will deliver money into his hands. Likewise, 
on the cross, Jesus comes to an agreement. You hand over all of your wrongs and your brokenness and your hurt to Jesus. And Jesus hands over all of his righteousness, his peace, his joy, and his healing. I invite you to open both palms of your hands. Imagine your sin and wrongdoing, your pain, your brokenness filling your hands. With heavy hands, reach forward and empty them at the foot of the cross. Jesus has taken your pain. Jesus has borne your suffering. He was pierced for your wrongdoings and he was crushed for your sin. By his wounds, you are healed. As you bring your hands back toward yourself, they are filled with Jesus' love, joy, peace, patience, kindness and goodness. How does it feel to receive Jesus' side of this agreement? Judas consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. One group is making their preparations. Judas, Judas searches for an opportune time, a favourable season to hand over Jesus. But Jesus is making his own preparations. He's preparing for the Passover meal. He knows the path that he's been asked to walk. He knows that the Lord is pleased with him and that his enemy will not triumph over him. But in the meantime, his enemies whisper. What preparations can you see Jesus making in your life? Where can you sense his work? During this time of Lent, how is Jesus preparing you? We pray. Holy Spirit, in the confusion of my life, help me to not leave, lose sight of you but lead me and help me to trust where you are leading. Amen.